everybody it is cinnamon cooney your art sherpa and today i'm going to be showing you how you can paint this let your love fly away air balloon over really romantic set of mountains and gorgeous sky we're going to be doing some fun cloud techniques today i'm going to show you some cool stuff about the mountains to get those in easier you're going to love what we do with the balloon i think really just this whole project is going to be a lot of fun for everybody and it's a perfect romantic paint so if you're kind of feeling it this year in your heart or you have love for somebody this is a really got my little love heart on this is a really good one for that on the mic is my husband john hey guys he's going to help me through the process of guiding you through this painting by tracking me with many many robotic cameras mm. i don't really know how much there are anymore they're just all over the place he's going to zoom in and he's going to make sure that you see everything i'm doing that way you can duplicate the techniques for yourself at home and i am going to break these techniques down i'm going to really explain every part of the process my whole thing is to not leave you guys wondering how it was done even though sometimes watching someone paint looks like magic i definitely definitely want to show you how the magic is done mm. now uh if you check the description below there's a link to our website where you can find this really cool gridded reference just waiting for you we're doing an 11 by 14 today and because the image is kind of simplistic we're going to do a two inch grid but of course there's more resources down there about like gridding software places to resize traceables uh if you've never painted before there's a link to a blog that covers everything you need to know if you've never painted before i fill up every single keystroke i can do in that description and then also if you go to the website all that is there for free for you to download there's a link right there so this information is there it's free and hopefully it's easy to get to and hopefully mm. i explained it i'm ready to kind of jump on in and get started if you need the full list of materials again check that description open it up it'll tell you all the paints and that's where they always are i like to hide them down there because i'm sneaky like that to put them in the description every time sneakily huh. so if you want to catch me in my in my material hiding ways go into that description and find all the goodies all right so here's the gridded reference and what you can see is we're going to be using this system and, and what's great about this is this is a, is a good one if you haven't been up for doing one of the complicated gridded projects this will teach you the principles of it but it's simplistic enough where it's not going to get away from you so if you're like you saw the lantern the other day but you were like whoa that's a lot <laughs> mm. that's cool now i have an 11 by 14 uh canvas and we like to on our channel do a thing where our community gives us a uh, uh, wishes or thoughts or hopes that they're wishing for and we put those on our surface and put that out into the universe so today amy is uh in the hospital and we're really hoping that she gets some good news so that's our wish that amy is like okay and then all the tests come back whatever the best they can be that result and then she's got nice doctors and it's as pleasant of a visit and if you're there right now and you're watching because you said you might be hi amy all right diana um she would just like to shine in her new job and just feel really confident and capable in her new job um healing for our own Catherine's shoulder and i feel that one because i've got that going on today uh sheila is wishing to be able to breathe easy she's dealing with copd and she'd like to just have a break from that and breathe easier um amy is also a different amy is wishing for her sister-in-law to find her way home and know she is loved and then this has been kind of a bunch of these have been coming in lost my lost that do? completely i'll get it later um that people who are in a battle with the addiction get the tools and strength and well-being to be able to fight and so you know if you've got someone in a family member that's in the middle of it we're wishing that they oh yeah I can, you're so sweet <laughs> we're just wishing that they get what they need to come home get help and know that they deserve and are worth being healthy so that's what we wish out into the universe i have an empty palette because we're going to do a ground to begin with to start this one out and i think for this i'm gonna just i'm gonna do a phthalo blue ground which means i'm gonna just paint the whole canvas with some phthalo blue all thing mm. with some phthalo blue i'm not gonna do it in a neat and tidy way i'm gonna grab a big chunky number 30 so i can do it fast And what I'm going to be doing is just kind of getting the surface this blue color. This is called toning a canvas or creating an acrylic ground. I could do this with a rag. I could 
I can do it with a brush, but the idea is I'm just turning the canvas from a white surface into a blue surface. Now, can I ask some questions about this? You can. And this is going to make the wishes and stuff get blended in. Hmm? I, I've, I've, I've seen people ask questions like, can you do this by coloring your gesso? Yep. Can uh, there yep, are... Holbein makes 35 colors of gesso. Right. You can tint your ask. gesso and gesso that way. It's totally fine. Okay. So pre-tinted gessos are another way that you could use colored yeah. grounds. This is a lot similar to if you've done, for those of you who've done pastels, this is like having your paper tone. Hmm. So this is like we're toning or creating a value so that we're not building up from white. We can build up from white, but I am a person, an artist who likes to, and anyone who's here will be like, layers. They're like onions and ogres and layers. Hmm. <laughs> she shreks that canvas. Shrek it up. All right. You can see I got that all in there. I didn't even use that much paint to get it in. A couple areas where the canvas was being um, a bit troubling. And so that's nice because that gives me a fresh surface. Acrylic, those of you who've ever stored your paintings the wrong way, know this, sticks to acrylic beautifully. <laughs> mm. Right? So if ever you store your paintings facing each other, they're going to become one single painting forever. So we're going to use that principle in our favor this hmm. time now to do the next part to do the simple gridding that we're going to do i've got to dry this because otherwise my chalk paint my chalk is going to get all messy and john is going to talk to you about the wonders of color shift oh okay so as she says what you guys need to know is that whenever you're uh drying your surface don't use heat on your acrylic paint and a lot of that's because uh, acrylic paint is heat reactive. It's a, you know, it's a polymer compound. It's sort of based in the plastics family. So heat uh, actually causes it to soften, can uh, accelerate uh, oxidization. Again, in your pro paints, you don't have as much of these issues, but they do in student paints uh, tend to be more prone to it. Yeah. Well, I know we just like talk about it every time like it's like, the biggest PSA announcement in well, painting. It's just like a good talking point. If you're new to painting, that's something you don't know about. You don't know about underbinding. Nope. You don't know what those little wood pieces are for the back of the canvas. You don't know what to do about a bound canvas. Like the list of things that you don't know. So sometimes we talk about those talking points because you're only going to be at the beginning once. And these discoveries are only going to be new ones. And I hope everybody is enjoying learning new facts. Now, this tool is a T-square. Uh, I don't know who made this one. It's really interesting because this one seems to be like almost all my T-squares go from left to right. You know how like we read, but this one goes from right to left. <laughs> but it was cheap. They were a steal on Amazon. And so I got some because I needed some that weren't messy. Now, as per your recommendation, I am testing huh. this out. This is a tool for marking out on fabric. This is a, a, a seamstress tool that a bunch of the community bought and said that they were loving for chalking and it has these little chalk bits in here like a, like a mechanical pencil i'm going to actually do this every two inches we're going to mark every two inches Ooh. this is a two inch grid so two four six eight ten twelve right? so that does indeed seem to be a water-based chalk it is not so my my testing on this is what you don't want is a wax-based Mark, marker, chalk marker. Yeah. You want a water-based one that will just simply go away. And this does seem to be chalk chalk. Yeah. And I just... like this because it was small and I was like, oh, that'd be good for drawing things in. So I'm testing it. Don't hate it. Uh, if, after I've tried it a few times, if nothing terrible happens, I'll probably add it to the affiliate links. Hmm. You know, at which point they will drive up the price some ridiculous amount. So and... I would say find a local resource for a reasonable price. Once you get that gridded in, we're going to have to give a little bubble dance for Patty because she loves that that shifty heat talk. You oh, know. yeah, Patty, we got to do that. I'm going to do an upside down uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. Now, on this, you'll notice that the bottom is a one inch because this is uh, an 11 by 14. It's not even, it's not a 14 by 12. So there's the one inch, but the grid that I provided for you guys has that in account. So I did that. So what you have on your website as your reference, you will have on your grid. And then as soon as we get this in, we're going to do a bubble dance. 
Yeah. What does a bubble dance say, new people? A bubble dance is so much fun. It's our Texas snowflakes because I don't get winter in Texas. <laughs> there is no snow. And if there is a snowflake, everything closes. We're not ready for any snow. It's every time it snows a little teeny tiny bit. It is snowpocalypse. I don't know how the East Coast even tolerates us <laughs> watching us on the news go, it's, it's made ice from the sky. Ah! <laughs> Dogs and cats living together. Ice from the sky. Pretty soon Vigo's going to show up and cause some trouble. All right, so <laughs> there's our grid. And you can see that went in really well. I am liking this. I think if you guys know what exactly the tool's called, because, again, this was y'all's suggestion. Here, hold it back up here. This is what it is. Let me zoom in on it. And it came with a little specialized pencil sharpener for it. Yeah, it has a pencil sharpener so I can sharpen my chalk here. And <laughs> it's kind of like got that mechanical pencil thing where you like can bring it down and it'll, it'll lengthen your chalk. So pretty cool thing, I think, so far. We'll see how it goes. All right. Bubble dance. And oh, a sip yeah. of coffee. We should I feel like I got the grid coffee. in, so I feel like I deserve coffee. Yeah, This I is agree. when people start going, is this woman going to talk the whole lesson? You, you gritted. I will leave a comment you gritted, before watching. You gritted. You did it. Sherpa gritted. You did it. You the Sherpa shimmy. I, I'm, <laughs> a, I'm afraid to make the camera shimmy because it's like to go, wah, and go crazy and go look at the wall or something. Yeah, give somebody a heart. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> It's it's the it's it goes from being very sensitive to being oversensitive. If and, you wandered in here and you're like, how much talking is there? There's a lot because I find it helps teach people how to do the projects. And we'd like to say thank you to our patrons who support us and make what we do possible. And we like to have fun. Because this yeah. isn't supposed to be some, like, boring academic study of art. Okay. Which you could do. Which we could do, but I don't feel like doing. Today. Now, I number my, my squares so that you can also number them. And this helps you find spots better on the canvas. Uh, so that is provided as well, you know, on your surface. Like there's 10 here and 8 and 6 and 5. Meaning that right here at the point where 12 and the last block are in 10, the heart kind of comes down. And goes up. See how we do that? Mm -hmm. Now you can see in square line 10 on this part right here where it's two, you know, two, four. It's going to come almost to the edge. Look at that. And then we're going to come down through this and actually make a cross line across 12. It's really wonderful how this works. Now the traceable's there, guys. Nobody's telling you that you cannot use the traceable. We that just want you. Yeah. We just want you to have some grid fundamentals. Well, because it's a super useful way to start getting your uh, stuff in. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to simplify my balloon a bit. There's this fabulous little point that comes down. And I haven't decided if I want to put it in or not. We'll see. And I'm going to put my little basket right here. I'm making my basket a little more focal, a little bigger, just because for the balance of the painting, sometimes things are terrific in a painting, but not so terrific. Uh, I mean, a, terrific in a photograph, but not so terrific in a painting. Right here at the 8 and 10 line, I'm going to make the top of a mountain. And this little mountain's going to travel down, down across 6. It goes down. There's some misty stuff that happens. And then over here, guess what it does? It also travels down, 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 all the way to this far bit. There is a side mountain coming forward, and it's going to come almost through eight. I like this chalk. Mm. I am not hating it, like, at all. So far. I like to test things for a little bit, because sometimes you think you don't hate it, and then you're like, I do, I do hate it. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed good at first, but then I, it is not good. And I feel like there's probably in the mist another little mountain range there. And that's all we've got to do. 
Now, another thing you can do if you really struggle with clouds, you can watch the video I dropped yesterday, which is about four really simple skies. And if, if clouds are like your nemesis, you could do the sponging method and be like, I'm done. But if you really struggle with clouds, you can also use the grid maybe sometimes to help you get in some cloud shapes or some cloud effects, right? Mm. Yeah. I am going to just take some CAD red for a second. While you're putting that on, I'm going to say thank you to Sherry, who gave us an awesome pair of sticker, and Lydia, who says she loves it when you do the Sherpa shimmy. So thank you, ladies. We appreciate your support. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. <laughs> Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. shimmy you give, shimmy, give her shimmy, a remote shimmy. control to a bubble machine and you're in trouble. It's I love somebody was writing there like, what is the unusual shiny substance all over your palette? And I'm like, bubbles. That's. They're like, no, really, what is it? I'm like, bubbles. It's bubbles. Bubbles. We blow bubbles. Watch the video. <laughs> they thought it was a secret gliding material. <laughs> it is. Glycerin. Glycerin. Now, the other thing, if you want to, you can kind of let yourself know about how much of the balloon's little ribs, how they're going, if you're going to want to get those in. Oh, yeah. And I feel like, you know, we are, but I'm going to sort of freehand them in as I paint it. If you're really nervous about those, go ahead and, you know, put those in. Actually, I'll show you how you would do that. Like you would come here and say, all right, there's this one here. Because that could be something you might be nervous about, huh? How to get the ribbing of the balloon to be a little bit better. Mm. There we go. And then uh, this one, this one kind of comes over. And you just use the gridding again, right? To help you find perspective on your little ribs. I'm going to maybe simplify one just so that we have it. Now, once you have that, though, you can do a couple cool things. You can take a number four round like you do. And get a little bit of your blue and your cad red. This is blue and cad red medium. And you're going to mix them together and you get kind of a dull brick color. Those of you that haven't painted before will be like, wait, doesn't red and blue make purple? Ah, the joys of the bias of color. <laughs> so uh, in light, red and blue make purple, but sometimes in pigment, they make a brick color. Because there's a secret primary that's hidden within these two colors that you maybe don't see with your eye, but you'll definitely see with your with the mix. And eventually you'll start to see with your eye. So red and blue make brick. Some reds and some blues make brick, but not all reds and all blues make brick. And there's we did a whole video about that. I remember. Split color charts. We have it's, a bunch of blogs and stuff. It's actually the, the split color palette thing was the first time I understood color. You're like, oh, that's what's going on. It's them hidden sneaky primaries, Scooby doing up my color palette. Well, yeah. Yeah. So you can see I'm just coming in here with my paint and creating these little deeper lines. It's a place to start, right? Mm. Everything takes a lot of layers, and we'll probably be doing some of the sky, and some of the sky might get over our balloon a little bit. But by putting this in now, we're going to be super happy we did. You know who likes layers? Ogres and onions. And Stephanie Barlow, because she gave us an awesome little pear sticker, too. Okay, you guys are so awesome. I love all the pear stickers, and it's such a tribute to the big art quest. I think so. So I love somebody was like, is there any chance that the Ruth Archer picture is still on Paint My Photo? And I'm like, not only is it there, it's the number one photo on Paint My Photo. <laughs> I wonder how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> y'all are, uh, y'all are, 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 are some reference and folks. They are. They use that reference. <laughs> and all these people are like, oh, it's all about pair photos. Is that what people want? And then all these pair photos happen. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. And then some, I started seeing pair paintings that year. Like everyone was doing pair paintings. And I, a friend I knew was like, I don't know. Pairs are all over the internet. There's some sort of pair trend going on. I'm like, is there? I wonder where that happened. 
I'm going to just give myself a little thought about where this box is. That's all the thought, you know, I've got to really worry too much about on that. If you want to, you can come in with a slightly brighter red and just go ahead and give this that coat, that first coat. Oh. Because we have so many coats on our um, painting to do that sometimes this early work, even though we're going to be going scumble, scumble, scumble sky, this is nice and will help us later. And also, it's very chill, is it not? Yeah. It's chill beginning to the painting. We're going to paint in the ribbles of a balloon. At this point, it's very cartoonish because it's very flat lines with, you know, fields of color. But we're going to make it fluffy and flow through the air. Flow through the air. So it's interesting. I have a lot of Valentine's paintings this year, like a lot, probably more than I've done any year. Mm. Why is John that? and I are not Valentine's people. Well, we're, we're the, half off chocolate day that, people. That's right. Half off chocolate day. But I do believe in love. <laughs> I, I'm like Cher. I believe in life after love. You know, so. I, I'm like the darkness. I believe in a thing called love. Oh, the darkness. We should make like a sharp like playlist. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have one in there. I think for a while I had like a music to paint by and it was just like whatever I was jamming to that night. And I hadn't actually shared it, but all these people found it and they're like, that's a really good music playlist. That's really nice. I'm like, okay. That moment when you forget that your YouTube channel is like super public. Mm hmm. You know, that's a thing. You know, sometimes you will go along in life and totally forget that you're a YouTuber. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember what I do for a living. YouTuber. So I'm just painting this all in. Hopefully you guys are painting it in, too. You can kind of see that I'm just following the strokes. If I lose my line, my dark line, I just come back with a little bit of the, the blue. I just want to keep track of where it is. And just do a, you know, nice, long... Not going to hurt you at this stage to get that sort of worked out. And you can always come in and crisp up the balloon's outside edge with the sky if you want. Come back in and go, no, you have a little more red here. There we go. Fun stuff. It's just the beginning. When we get the quinacridone cad red mix, the balloon's going to really, really pop. But not pop in the air, because that would kill everyone. <laughs> and that wouldn't be good. So we saved ourselves a little bit of work later by doing this now. And in painting, a lot of times, you know, we'll look at stuff and be like, what is going to, you know, create a lot of work later? Where can I save some effort and some time? And, you know, I might come clean up my edges because I can and you can if you want to. That's pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I have a lot of chalk here. I don't really need any of it. If you want to know how your chalk gets removed, I'm going to take a number 12 silver stone round. That's, oh, that cleans up really well. So that's the other test I do. Will the chalk remove with a damp brush? Because what I don't want is grid lines that won't go away. I'm going to kind of get my sky jam on, so I don't really need any of that. I want to I want to feel my clouds and be all organically cloudish. Mm. However, I do want to be able to paint into my balloon if I need to, so I'm going to dry it with the hair dryer. And then take a picture of it? And not, huh? Then take a picture of it? Oh, yes, thank you. And then I didn't get the grid, did I? Thank ah! you, Lydia. Thank you, Lydia. So, what she was referring to is that uh, we like to put up a little step-by-step 
and some other references like you know this reference image stuff like that and you can find that on our website by going out the art and uh, that will help you do these kinds of things um, you'll notice that the painting appears a little dark and that's because she's on the under painting stage so as she continues to add more layers those uh, it'll start to brighten up and, and look much more like it does there in that reference photo. Yeah, it takes a minute to get to the reference, but we do. You can check some of my other paintings. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, I feel like for new people that come by and they're like, they've never seen the channel and they come by, I'm like, what must they think? Like, I wonder if they're like, where is this going? Yeah. Like, how are there 500 subs, 1,000 subs here? And where is this going? <laughs> We're get there. We're going to get there. Yes, we are. We're going to get there. Yes, we are. I'm going to put out some colors and I'll tell you what they are. So this is, right now we have Thalo Blue, Cad Red, kind of already out, Quinacridone Magenta, Ultramarine Blue. I also have a, a bit of Cad Yellow Medium. There we go. I'm going to put a titch of my Titanium White into this mix that I might want. Um, I've got some yellow ochre. Don't need that much. You don't even need to put that much out because it's just for the basket, like seriously. <laughs> and a little bit of burnt sienna, as you do. I'm gonna throw some deoxazine purple in there. And to help me get the turquoise, I'm gonna use a little of my phthalo green and I'll probably mix it in with a small amount of my phthalo blue over here. So I'll put out a little more. And I think I'm going to want some tinting white. So I'm going to hop over to my paint cart. Well, John looks at the painting and I sip coffee to yep. get my tinting white. Well, we know uh, they can see what you're doing. I've got multi, multi camera Don't, on like, you. like come over and watch me do this. No, this... I'm not going to follow you over the air. That would require so weird and creepy. more hand-eye coordination than I'm prepared to exhibit today. <laughs> I gotta finish out the zinc anyways today because I lost the cap. So <laughs> there you go. All right. So titanium white, zinc white. Zinc white's really nice when you're doing landscapes because it lets you do the landscape, and that's why we like it. How's everybody doing? Really good. They were saying earlier they really liked your necklace. That was Thank very you. sharp. They thought that was very pretty, and they liked your hair and makeup today. You looked very on point. Thank you. It's like all matchy matchy. Where it's like a it thing is, is going matchy, on. Matchy. I feel like a. I feel like a. Got a thing going on. Maybe I don't have a thing going on, but I you do. Feel like Everyone I do, was so thinking you like, do. They were they were saying you're looking pretty good today, Sherpa. I got some stuff. I'm gonna start putting in the center of the sky, which is really going right. to be a little bit of phthalo blue and phthalo green mixed together. And I'll go ahead and get a little bit of my titanium white into it because I want quite a light color. And we're going to just take this brush, this big, what you want is any big brush you have that you can do this sort of fluffy, scumbly stuff with. You have a fluffy, scumbly brush? Mm. You could use a mop brush. You could use our mop technique. You could use a sponge technique, really whatever you want. It's fine. A little more blue into it as I go. I find myself drawn to the crane technique. Are you now? Mr. Miyagi got me hooked at a young age. I feel like Mr. Miyagi sometimes. I'm just brushing this back and forth. And look, that brushing, it's like the painting that's underneath that blue kind of is showing through. It's really nice. You can see where the bristles are leaving some different tonality, which is always great for the atmosphere of sky. It's just nice to come along and be like, oh, here you go. If you need a little water on your brush, if you're painting, this is a full hog brush. So if you're painting with a full hog like this, these really aren't designed for acrylic. I was actually talking with a, an expert from an art materials company yesterday, mm -hmm. maybe the day before yesterday. Hard to say, a lot happens in my life and I lose track of everything. Anyways, we were talking about how hog is awesome, but not in general well-designed for acrylic.
And so what you do if you have just a hog, and you can get just hog, big chunky hog brushes, lots of places. You just have to know, don't let them get waterlogged. Uh, with goat, avoid it altogether because the acrylic and water over time will misshape the goat brush beyond recovery. So you'll have a great brush for a minute, but then in about half a second, not anymore. Uh, the finicky nature of goats. The finicky nature. Well, it's fine because, like, you know, they're made for different media, right? Mm -hmm. And it's okay that I get over the balloon a little bit. We're not too worried about it. We're just creating that sort of blending thing. Now, I can come in with a square brush. I'm going to grab some of my... This is a number eight bright. So these just have short filaments out and nice edges. And I'm going to make sure that my mountains are kind of thought about here. And I'll brush this back and forth along this horizon edge. And you can see I'll even wiggle that a bit. Wiggle it. Just a little bit, gotta wiggle it just a little bit. You do? <laughs> <laughs> gotta wiggle it just a little bit. Look how mean I am to my brushes. I wonder how many of you are going like this right now. Is this you? Are you out there? I say! Wiggle it just a little bit. The person who's making the beautiful brush jobs, <laughs> wiggle it just a little bit. Now, I move quite, kind of fast through my paintings, right? I yep. do. I move a little bit fast through my paintings, and that's cool, but understand that even as I do that, there isn't a speed component to your painting. Mm. So you're not like trying to keep up with me lynn was asking sense. so lynn was asking what what do you find the difference between holbein and senlier uh senlier you should use a lighter water uh senlier has a really unique pigment line um i think they both have about the same blendability What I would say the big differences between the companies are the product range and the color lines. So, so Holbein has a very uniquely kind of Japanese color line, right? There are colors that are very unique to what you would traditionally see in watercolor over there. They can be more and, experimental in the color range. Yeah, and they're, and they're really awesome. And they have the best luminous colors on planet Earth, like by miles, miles and miles and miles. But they also have 35 kinds of gesso and all these mediums. And every pigment line is a watercolor, is a gouache, is a matte medium, is a gesso, is a liquid, is a They're just a paint oil. technology company. Yeah. And so uh, Senlier has been around since really Van Gogh and actually provided paint to some of the most famous painters in the world. They used to come into the store. Mm -hmm. And they are old world's craftsmanship. It's how we keep our foot back into the past so that we can move and, forward into the future. So the beautiful traditional colors and processes and, and things from European painting is still available there. And they're both yeah. equally hard to find online. Yeah, Senlier has years and years and years of know-how and knowledge that mm -hmm. range back and their ability to sort of reach into that uh, knowledge base and produce quality product is pretty so they're both fantastic companies and they're just each a little bit different. And what I would say is as an artist, what you want to do is you want to figure out the few companies that are good and won't waste your money and just work with them. But be a little bit flexible because you never know what you're going to find on sale. You never know when you're going to find a deal. And if you know, Senlier, Holbein, Golden, Matisse, um, and M. Graham mm -hmm. are all safe. PBO, safe. Uh, Royal Talon, safe. If you know those companies make good products, then if you see a sale, you can jump on it. Oh, new one that's good is the Artist Loft Level 3. Not 2, not 1, 3. All right, let me. So I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine into my quinacridone magenta, and it gets me kind of this red-purple. I'm going to go ahead and add a titch of white to it. And I'm going to come here, and I'm going to begin to softly put in these little kind of clouds. So here we go. See, I'm wiggling this brush and moving it forward on the toe. 
fun stuff. What are we going to do? Wiggle it just a little bit. We're going to wiggle it just a little bit. Here we go. Mm-hmm. It's getting purple. It's getting purple because we have that nice kind of purple pink pop up there. And again, as you come down through here, you know, make sure that, you know, you've got this sort of nice, look at this, this very atmospheric, I'm going to wiggle just the, see, it's just the edge of the brush. I can do this with a bright, I can do this with my finger. Um, it's about knowing that clouds make these very airy bits. That's what you need to know is that clouds do that. Not have a particular cloud brush or particular anything it's really really just about understanding oh hey these structures these objects in nature behave this way and when i'm painting them i'm going to paint them this way you can see i'm just enjoying my little scumbliness <laughs> but that's beautiful right there isn't that mm -hmm. a lovely little edge of cloud form so that's the ultramarine blue in the quinacridone magenta. I'm going to get a little more magenta on there and I'll come right on up to the balloon. You know, get it right on in there. We're going to go right into the balloon because I know I'm putting it back. I just needed to know where the basic balloon was. This balloon is so basic. This balloon is totally basic. <laughs> I like it. It is simple and needs layers. It's just, oh, look at that. You can see that coming in, can't we? Now, as I'm coming down, I might get a little more into my tinting way here. You can see that there. And I know that these are, they have a little bit of the pigment in them, but they're just a softer. And I want to start talking about those softer bits that are right there. Now, this is a good place to catch a picture for the step by step. Mm. Because what you're trying to do, and let's talk about this, is we're taking the ultramarine, the quinacridone, and titanium white, and a brush. It's having a hair day. Look at this. Having a hair day. Right. And you'll notice uh, a thing that I do as I'm working is I am pulling the moisture out of this hog brush as I go. Because I know if it gets too waterlogged, it's going to turn into mush. And I need it not to mush. So no we're still on number 12 round. So I'm like using the edge of the bristles and I'm coming through here. I'm going to come around and bring it down, letting uneven edges and little moments of expressiveness happen. That's, I really like how the uh, wispy the clouds turned out there. I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see those brush strokes as you get in on them. They are much more coarse than you would expect. But as you, you know, as you sort of pull out, it really, it really sort of comes together. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. It's really quite, I think, special. I like it. I like it too. I like it too. And I feel like this is a romantic painting and I feel like this is a painting that I would, you know, that anyone would love to have on the wall. So I'm going to really, really take you through this. So I'm going to get a little of my quinacridone oh, all into my brush. See how it's all in there. And I'm going to get some of my pad yellow. I'll pick up a little white as you might. There we go. There's the mix. So if you're looking for a brush like that, what you're going to want is a good hog, right? It's great if they'll mix it with the synthetic filament. Like if it's a hog and synthetic, that's fantastic. That's the best. But if not, it's a good hog. It's best dressed. Um, the bristles are flagged. These are words that you want to look for on the little brush thing. Whenever you uh, say that uh, hogs are for a... Hog brushes are for another medium. 
I just uh, hear Ernie Sabella screaming in Pumbaa's voice, I'm not made for a medium. <laughs> Poor Pumbaa. <laughs> no, and, and, and so here's something to understand. Brush companies do not um, render or kill animals for products. No. They actually make deals with uh, industries that are already engaged in that and, um, and purchase from them. Yep. Which is one of the reasons why um, sometimes brushes are very high cost. That's, that's if, true. If they're sourcing from certain places, you can see I'm just letting this happen here. If they're sourcing from certain places, those costs can get up. It's like uh, when they do bone black, which used to be from ivory, right? Ivory black? Mm -hmm. They work, the few places that do it work with preserves and they only get the sustainably sourced. No elephant is, you know, Kel, like, and, and, and it can't even be a current graveyard. There's like a whole bunch of rules around it and the paint companies are pretty respectful about that. So sometimes, you know, it's true that in the world, I'm going to go carefully around here. It's true that in the world, these are big issues that we need to be aware of as human beings. But often in our own industries, it's not the same thing. I'm going to get a little bit of my white and just and make sure that this is a nice blend. Just so you know that painters are sort of equal opportunists, go check out Mummy Brown. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, I think who has the best thing on Mummy Brown is Ask a Mortician. It's true. A, I, I can't write, I don't, I don't watch the whole channel, so I can't say it's family friendly all the way across, but I think the Ask the Mortician is okay. Watch it first. It's not a great memory. It's like, not like Brave Wilderness, where it's like, you know it's good. Well, for kids. For kids. It's good for adults, too. What are you talking about? I watch Brave Wilderness. Just, we'll say, Cody office. Peterson. Uh, I, I, I like office, uh, Ask a Mortician. It just may not always be office friendly. There you go. It might not always be office friendly. That's what it is. Whereas Brave Wilderness is pretty much office friendly. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. You can see I'm just continuing these little bits of tonalities, right? Look at that. So next layer. Isn't that great how that built up? You have to be like it almost, is? Like, where did that sky even come from? Now over here. I'm going to take my damp brush and I'm going to just make sure that this is a little smoothed out because I just felt like it got a little kind of chunky here. Huh? And I don't want it to be. I'm just getting a little white into that. I'll get it again in a minute. I'm going to get it again in a minute. You guys good? Yeah. I so like we're how just building up this sky, aren't we? I think it's looking really good. You know, when you understand that the skies are built up in these kind of like layers and that it's about these sort of irregular edges, it really helps your experience within, you know, the painting on the sky. So pink. A lot more yellow into the pink this time. needs even a little bit more so whenever i do a color i'm like i ask myself what does it need does it need more yellow does it need more pink i'm just using the craziness of the brush i'm making sure that there's some of these Pops of cloud that are coming down here in that range. One of my favorite skies to do, guys. This brush here, look at its hot mess. Hmm. <laughs> Doesn't it look like it's just a heart attack? I've had this so long. This was one of the few brushes that I had really dropped some money on. Mm-hmm. When I was painting, like I really like, I didn't wait for like the sale or anything. Had this a long time. Uh, it's still here. And I still love it. You know, don't 
just let your brushes go because you're like, oh, well, you know, it got a, it ha it's having a bad hair day because look what this bad hair day is doing. Look what it does. It does great stuff, doesn't it? Gives me these wonderful little bits of, what? That's wonderful. That's so wonderful. Is that not just stunning? You get back from a bit, you're like, oh gosh, that's real pretty. And it's really gorgeous. I might pull a little more white into it. You can even get a little more zinc into it because you're just. Now I'll just take a little bit of the. Talk a bit about some highlights there that are happening down the clouds because that's dramatic when we get back. Look how dramatic that is. So you're taking something that you've already started to imply and then what you do is you lean into it. See how we're leaning into that sky? Let's look back at it from a distance. How's it looking, guys? I like it. And then you can even take some of this in the same way you took the pink color in there and kind of add it to the sky a few places as well. Talking about maybe a very soft cloud form that could be happening. You just find little spots and be like, where do I have some clouds? Super happy with that. I think I, I'm enjoying this. It's coming together quite nicely. Now, have you ever cut up any of your brushes or altered them? Yeah. 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 Just as you need. A lot of specialty brushes get made is that artists start like cutting a brush <laughs> to get an effect. And then the brush maker see all those out there. And then they're like, oh, well, we'll make one. Um, I will say that if you can find it made, a lot of times it's better because it can be very, like, very tooled and specific. But, yeah, lots of brushes. Mm. Lots of artists cut brushes. Lots of the artists cut the brushes. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with that. So we've got some low clouds. Now we do have a low pink cloud that I see. I'm going to put that right there. Nice low pink cloud. Another low pink cloud. Rinse that out. And we also have some nice kind of little fluffy other clouds, right? And I'm feeling like I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine and my, maybe my white here. I'm going to bring in this little sort of mountain head. Look at that go. That's lovely. Ultramarine and the white. It's kind of fun there, that little bit of crazy de fluff. And let's also add something here. Wiggle that in. And come across the mountains. You know, really wiggling that in, and I can kind of bring some of that out here. Look at that. Well, that's, that's happened, hasn't it? Yeah. And if you want, you get a little touch, oh gosh, just a touch of yellow on your brush. What? Yeah. How pretty, right? 
Just having fun. Painting clouds different ways. Just bring that along there, making little weird uneven edges. Mm. Get back from that and take a look and see how you feel about those clouds and how they've caught light and if you like that or where that's at. Because it's really always about what you like. Yeah. Right? You've got to find the space in which you are super happy. Now, the mountains. I'm going to get back into my bright. And what I'm going to say is the mountains are a very interesting thing. So I'm going to take a little of my thalo green over to my thalo blue. I mean thalo blue to my ultramarine blue. Might even get some dioxazine purple into it. It makes kind of a nice dark color. And you can see that's not dissimilar from the mountain little shape that I did there. I'm going to brush this back here. This is interesting how this is going to layer in where we have the mountaintops and then the fog and then clouds and then mountains. It's going to be a fascinating little bit. I'll get some of my zinc. Come up the hill a bit to add some tonal interest back into the main little weird mix. And you might want to come on the edge of your brush, kind of just marking up and down to say, hey, this, and I can push, see I'm push it in. You're just trying to make a, a very rough, distant tree line. Yeah, a little rough, distant tree line. I mean, you can do a fan or something to get that as well, but you can do it with really any brush. It's just knowing, oh, it needs a, a rough, distant tree line is, is what I need, is the big deal. So, a little blue, ultramarine blue, little dot purple. Let's come here. I'm going to bring this here. All right, we're pulling that there. Nice, smooth little hilltop, right? Yeah. Take your brush, make sure it's kind of wiped off. It's a dry brush. I'm going to very lightly. Brush down that side. A little bit of white. And I think to get the effect I want, I'm going to want it maybe to be a little drier. So I may put some in and then dry it and then touch it up to where I want it to be. Okay. So just, you can see that she's just getting a little of that detail put in there. And... It's important to get a, another good reason to make sure that you're dry between layers is so that you don't drag the lower layers with paint. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's true. So this is a kind of darker little cream color, and I'll come to this side and make sure that there's some talk of the snow mountain. But you can see the dry brush does that a little easier for me. A little bit better, a little bit more chill. I like it some more. A little bit of 
purple up this mountain. Accentuate that, exaggerate that little ridge there. You want it to be white, but not pure white. Just dry brush that little bit over the top there. And so now you've got a little distant mountain. And the last little thing is we've got to make a darker mountain coming forward. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and a lot of ducks purple. And this mountain here kind of comes up along this line and then goes down. And we know we've got a cloud there or mist, like the low hanging misty cloud that we're going to need to do. How's it going for everybody? Pretty good. Now I'm also going to, you know, maybe just kind of talk a little bit about how that edge is. I'm just tapping the brush up and down. Uh-huh. Zoom in there. So you're just using that same brush. Number what? Six bright. Hmm. I didn't have to switch to a fan. Could you use a fan? Absolutely. Could you use a fan. And and so some folks were asking if we're gonna you know, like demonstrate with a cloud brush earlier, but you you can you can really get a something out of it anything. Yeah, the thing to understand about clouds is sometimes I do them with bright, sometimes I do them with a the cloud brush. You know, sometimes I do them with a mop, sometimes I do them with anything. If you understand your brush and you understand the form of clouds, right? Like if you know, oh, well, the underside of these have to be lit a little bit in the way that they're going to build up and the way that they're airy here and we catch little bits, you can pretty easily come in and get that worked in. Maybe if you just keep layering that kind of. Making sure that's dark value. Now I have to dry this to do this next part. Okay. I'm gonna dry it, and then I'll show you the next part. Okay. So the, again, the important part of the drying is just making sure that as you do the different layers, you don't want it to uh, smear or smudge or anything like that. So she's just gonna make sure that she goes through. She is going to go through and make sure that it is dry. Why I can't speak today, I couldn't tell you. But thank you guys for joining us. We really do appreciate it. It's really nice to have you guys come out here and hang out with us as we paint pictures of hot air balloons that are full of love. And, you know, I'm in all seriousness, I love that you guys join us. I really appreciate you being part of our lives, coming out here and hanging out with us and doing this, this thing called art. I'll do a, I'll do a bright here. So this is also hog, so it gives me that nice scuffly effect, right? That nice dry brushing effect, but it's a mix with synthetic filaments. It's a number eight bright, right? And we've got some clouds to do here, don't we? So I'm gonna take a little bit of my Quinn magenta and some of my ultramarine, and that gives me kind of a purple color, and I'll get into my titanium white. I'm gonna come along here. I'm going to work just the corner of this brush. Making what? Very uneven little shapes. Pushing it. Now, if you guys have got some questions that aren't, uh, you know, that you did that sort of outside the scope of today, they're kind of big, you're having a hard time, always feel like you could go over to our Facebook group and post those up there. Because you can, you can post up photos and pictures, and yeah. if you're having trouble with, you know, some weird medium combinations, feel free to post them up there and we'll take a look at them. Well, and, and some caveat to that. So if it's a tutorial from my show. Oh, yeah, this was more, this more had <laughs> to do with like. you have a question about a tutorial. Yeah. If you have a question about an original that you're working on, just randomly, those are Fine Art Fridays. That's mm -hmm. when we put those in. But if you have a question about a tutorial, like anytime, um, and a lot of times I'll tell you the tutorials, 
And again, check that link below because it's about stuff beginners need to know, how to blend, how to make clouds. I have a whole bunch of how to make clouds in that blog. Mm -hmm. so there's a bunch of information about this. And I'm going to keep making videos about that subject. I'm not going to stop. You can see how I'm just letting the, the dryness of the, the brush kind of come in here and begin that. But what do I want? I want a very uneven little line of pink there. And then as I come forward, I'm going to get more white into it. I might even get some zinc into it, some titanium white. And let's add that extra value to some of the stuff. See, I'm doing this with a bright now. I could do this with my big brush. could have done the whole thing with my big brush all the way through. But the, the magic isn't in the brush. It's in understanding how clouds are shaped. They're random shapes, the way wind comes up and curls some of the moisture over, or, you know, maybe goes like that where you see a little bit of an upswing, right, in a cloud. You know, just knowing that those things are things that happen, knowing how light impacts it. You know, when is it going to be light? When is it going to... It wears its light source, so that means, like, what part of the cloud is dark? What part of the cloud is light? The fact that clouds are not really white. <laughs> Kind of see that we're getting it. Now, when I do a square brush, I do tend to work the corner more than the flat of the brush. I'm going to rinse it out and pull the moisture out of it. And I am going to play with one more layer of lighter paint, just to exaggerate some. That's some deep purple smoke on the water. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's, it's, it's clouds. Oh, well. Smoke on the water, it's clouds. My mistake. Yeah. And sometimes I have to move my canvas to get a good access to my painting. And then you just get that to where you're like, yeah, I feel like that's a nice, low kind of mountain, cool, you know, that works. I'm going to take a picture of that, and then we're going to get the next mountains up. Mm. These mountains turned out pretty nice. Yeah, this is a fun mountain class. You're going to come over this and do this. This is a fun, unexpected mountain class, right? With a little bit of hot air balloon in it. With a little bit of hot air balloon going on. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so here I've got kind of another little mountain, and it's interesting. I'm going to get into my ultramarine and my, interestingly enough, my yellow ochre. Because these, again, have a hidden primary, it will keep it from being uh, overtly bright in its color range. I'm going to just work that little mountain up here and know it needs some darker values. And I'll have to put another layer of, you know, something there. A 
filling that in. We'll have trees and we'll have different things. But we're just saying right now, let's get a little bit of our tinting white. And brush that through. This one, you might want to grab a little more of your titanium white. This is just a basis. Because there's bits of this sort of peeking out through what will be dark trees. And I want to add a little more yellow ochre. Still toned a bit with. Pop that down in there. Like let it be sort of like a random. And that there has like almost a highlight here on this part of the mountain. So I don't want to forget that. Before I get into the fun, busy work of my trees. So now I'm getting some forward scapes. Dry it. Dry it. Make sure that surface is ready for the next layer. Do, do, do. And... Oh, well, thank you, Rita. That's very nice of you to say. I'll tell Cinnamon when she goes back on. Oftentimes, I think that Cinnamon's paintings turn out better than her reference image. And I think that's just... Uh, because, you know, a lot of these reference images are either artificially created or she gets them off of one of the sites or some she pays for them. But I always... Uh, I always think your Rita was saying that she thinks that your uh, your photos always your paintings turn out better than your reference photos. Thank you. And I was like, well, yours. You know, these reference photos are oftentimes created or taken from sites and kind of altered. But yeah, I like yours a lot better. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, we always we never ever rip off photographers. We oh, always no, pay for licensed. our images. We yeah. pay. <laughs> 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 All right. So. This side of the mountain kind of has like a, a, like a backside and it's sort of misty. And how do you get to that, right? So I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine and my phthalo blue and my docks purple. They're pretty nice, right? Nice dark color. And I'll get into some of my tinting white, which is got a bit of a, you know, lighter effect, but won't change the color of the brush so much. little distant little trees there you go a little bit of that darkness goes up there Just really all along that sort of tree line, there's an effect and a foot going on. Some of these are a little more defined, so it's tempting to come in and piece out some more detailed little elements, right? Mm. You know, you just got to keep in mind what you're talking about here, which is the tops of far, far away little pine trees. So I've just got my purple and ultramarine there, and I'm... Now, it, it maybe it's like more in the mist, so I can come in and... Lighten some of those. You know, I'm gonna have to say thank you to Lynn. Yeah. She, she and you know what? Also, Stephanie gave us a, a sticker earlier. Stephanie. When we, another sticker. 
So she gave us two stickers today. She gave us another sticker earlier, and I it was just in the middle of all of the craziness. So thank you, Stephanie. I forgot to make sure we I got that for you. Bubble it up. Bubble to Stephanie. And I'm going to say thank you to Lynn, who reminded me to tell y'all to click that subscribe button. Oh, yeah. Then subscribe. click the bell. So if you that like you free can... art lessons and with like a thousand already existing and probably a thousand more into the future. That's right. And subscribe. And then you can also get those notifications if you if you send them there to that little thing at the screen. And then you can always hit pause and come back to it. But forget who she is. Look, there it is. There are Sherpa. That's who She's I am. Here. That's who she is. So you can kind of see I made like a mistier uh, color of those Where are you? fellows, right? No, there, there you are. Now I'm going to come in and get a very dark value of them. And let's make some defined little bits of something. <sighs> These will be a little more forward. Somewhere along here, sometimes there's like little clumps that happen. We want to tell uh, our viewers about those little clumps. And that's kind of why I like to use the round so we can be a little more specific. You don't want to paint like the detail of every tree, but just seeing that kind of up and down little value of the trees and Bring that back and forth. How's that doing? So you can kind of see the distant little. Woo! And then when I get that in, I can always come here and get my dark, dark, darkest color. I'm going to get my phthalo blue and my uh, docks of purple, and I'll come here and bring this here. And we're going to make that a very deep color. Bring that back here. I want that sort of deep too. Through here. Make that very deep. you're just talking about little bits of something that happened. Oh. And we want those bits. Do. Let's talk about this little hillside here as well as you do. I'm just pulling the brush down. Yeah. All right, we're going to be like right here. Get into it right here. And we're using our blue and our purple kind of like a chromatic dark value. Now we're talking about these dark areas on our hills. And I can come in and get even into my, as I move up, there's this sort of interesting little down value that we've got going on. Make sure some of these are higher than others. I'm going to go on the corner of my brush and I'm going to just talk about this tree just a little bit more than any other tree. This weird little lone tree. And then maybe a little friend here on the corner of the brush. On the corner and just come down this little mountain. Saying, hey, some stuff happened there, but it's, it's lighter and it's, say, less defined than those two little more defined trees. Now, where this is dry, right, I'm going to take a little bit of my zinc 
my tinting white. And I'm going to kind of come through here. Maybe push back a little mist between these mountains. Can you see that? Mm. Through them. Add some mist to your hills. Because the hills have mist. And you can put a little back in if you feel like you lost a little of your mist. Because that is the beauty of tinting white, zinc white, is that it will do that for you. You can even bring some of this back forward, which I feel like it kind of back into this mountain a little bit. See how I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Layering a bit of mist. That happens right here. So those trees are showing out above that line. Nothing wrong with a tree showing out a little bit. Nothing wrong with a tree showing out a little bit. You take a little doxazine purple, cad red, and ultramarine blue. This is going to make a very deep chromatic black. You can even add black into it if you want at this point for this front hill. Which I may, because I do want the depth and value. There you go. A little Mars black out here. There you go. Uh, if you're wondering what this is, this is the abstract acrylic. It is actually an inexpensive paint that's quite good. Hmm. Um, it is one of the few student brands I do recommend. So I'm just making sure this is as dark of a value as I have on my surface, outside of the shadows on the balloon. I'm going to make a little tree line that happens here. So there we go. We've done the darker, lighter into the darker mountains. You've kind of got that going. I like that. Are you guys happy with your scape? I'm going to take a picture of my scape. Yeah. So we have a little landscape, distant little bottom landscape. How nice is that? Turned out really nice. Yeah, you know, we get to have some fun. We're going to work on that uh, balloon up there. We get to work on the balloon. So I've got my thalo blue and thalo green together, which is the color I, I use to make my sky. And I'm going to come make some in light version of it. Make just a little bit around here. Sometimes I will come back and paint an area in around something just to make sure that it's, I'm wiggling the brush to blend it out, mm -hmm. really going to pop. Make it contrast. Yeah. And the trick is just don't erase the good work you did when you were going using similar sort of strokes and effects. Are you, now, what brush are you using there? I'm just using a number six bright. Still that little 
Yeah, I'll probably do most of the blend with this. I'm just trying to make sure that it's got a bit of something cool around it. Take a little of my black and a little of my yellow ochre. There we go. Then I'm gonna get a little black. Oh, that was yellow ochre. <laughs> So rinse out. Sometimes that'll happen where you get a color. You're like, I don't want that. So I'll just take it away. I'll let that dry for a minute so I can get it in easier. Mm. It's just being a mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Should you do it now? Looking for red. Looking for red. Looking for red. <laughs> in looking for red. The wrong looking places. for red. I'm just looking for red. Okay, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Two different ways in that song there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so weird. I'm going to get a little bit of my, again, phthalo blue, which makes our brick. I'm going to come around here and start to paint a very kind of crisp edge, beautiful line, right, along our balloon. You know, and there's some shadow there, right? We've got some shadow that's happening. Nice coverage. Just bring a little, little shadow coverage happening here. And this this side is actually in, in quite a lot of shadow, right? We're going to start getting those values together. And I'm going to, when I get there, I'm going to take a little bit of my, I love my uh, cad red and my magenta together. If I need to, I'll get into a little bit of my tinting white. Come along the side here. Create a little highlight. And there's a little highlight right here. One that I will be exaggerating at a later date, tell you that. <laughs> Red. Just putting in the thoughts of them at this moment. And right here, it kind of starts to Pull in another little area where the, the sun is maybe catching some of our balloon. We'll pull it down into here. There we go. How we feel about that? I'm going to get Kind of a brighter bit of the mix and continue to try to speak to
these lighter and darker areas. So that's what we're just painting. We're just painting the way the light and dark happens. If you need to go back and get your shadow color, what's nice is it's right here, isn't it? It is right there. You can just come right back up anywhere you need to. Like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about that shadow a little more through here. Ooh, Sabrina asks a very good question. This is, I've seen this come up before. Mm. Okay. So, uh, when you're painting along and you see the little bumps on the surface mm -hmm. where the canvas is kind of showing through and, yeah. uh, like I can zoom in over here and you can see how you can see the, the surface is kind of bumpy. Yeah, but none of the white is showing. Right, there. none of the white is showing, but it's kind of bumpy. Yes, it's um, the surface texture. Is is it supposed to be painted until that's smooth and no. flush? No, if you want a smooth surface, you have to buy a whole different, uh, yeah, you need to get something like an ampersand or an artboard, or maybe you purchase a linen surface where it's like uh, linen and then you sand it and just unsand it. That's all before you begin painting. And you do not paint until it's smooth. And those sanding, those are advanced techniques, which often require, like, you have a filter and respirator so you don't get any of that yeah, stuff in you. Yeah, that's probably the most dangerous thing you do in the painting is sand, because if you have any cadmium or any of the stuff that doesn't belong in your lungs, which really none of your paint belongs in your lungs. Don't breathe paint. Don't, don't breathe paint. Don't, don't eat, eat paint. It. Don't set it on fire. Just none of it, yo. Just use a brush to stick it on a surface. If you use your fingers, wash up afterwards. Don't eat paint. I'm just tapping a little bit of a, see, we're just tapping in those little reflections to say, oh, some of that balloon, what's happening there, right? Mm -hmm. And if I want to come here and be like, there's, tap some of that in. And keep trying to work those in. And then definitely, you know, up here at the top is more red. There we go. Just getting those. Pulling those down. Just enjoy painting this little red shape. Ooh, and I'm going to say thank you to Patty, who gives us a great public service announcement that says, don't drink paint water. Please don't. <laughs> if you, can, you won't, like, immediately die. It's just something you don't want to get in a habit of, and cumulatively, it's not great for you. You don't want to be uh, the filter for all of that stuff. And thank yeah, you, Patty. Yeah, don't make your kidneys be the filter. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Patty, for all, and all of the patrons out there supporting us. We love you guys. Love the support and appreciate you guys sharing and commenting and clicking the subscribe button and the bell and, you know, all, Doing the, all, the, things. all the things, the YouTube things. All the YouTube things. I'm just sort of softening this here. Sometimes I'll do that with a little dry brush effect where I soften it. If you're time traveling and you're watching this mm -hmm. some many millennia in the future. Yes. And there's some other kind of thing that isn't a subscriber bell. Do mm -hmm. that too. Yeah. Whatever it is. Whatever the YouTube social media thing you is. you suddenly have to do for reasons that only YouTube can determine. So when you're watching this in 3030, hit the I love it button and that you want to be contacted on your personal communicator when we drop another one. Right. <laughs> Whatever it is, if YouTube is even still here. It'll be the next thing. It will be the next thing. Whatever the next thing is. This is real similar to the umbrella painting. When you paint umbrellas, this is similar. Process that you go through. Yeah. 
soften some of these ripples when you paint pumpkins. Again, similar thing. Take some quinacridone. And I'm going to come to the side of the balloon and I'm going to glaze over it with the quinacridone. You guys seeing this? Yeah. So the glazing doesn't take away your value. It's almost like a grisaille effect, but it helps it feel like more red. And it also helps the balloon feel like on this side things are cooler. You know what we're doing? We're just glazing. We're going to glaze about to the midway point. Glaze it. And then also, I want to kind of glaze the bottom of the balloon, but not all the way to the top because this side's more in light. Just building up the layers. And yes, you know, we can absolutely kind of do a cartoon effect on a balloon like this, but sometimes it's nice just to know how to paint an air balloon. <laughs> right? True. Isn't that sometimes just nice? Yeah, just sometimes nice to add. It's it's good to have air balloon, like you could throw this against almost any sky that you were happy with. Yeah. And just be like, look, I have a balloon painting. And I'm so enjoying what the Quinn is doing over the Cad Red that I'm kind of pulling that around more because it's going to really let me get my shadow effects more how I want them. And All right, like if I want to take a little bit of a diox into my Quinn, and perhaps say exaggerate anything that I have going on here, I can do that. I'm going to dry this. All right. So I can do some dry brushing over the top. Yes, drying the surface does is going to be helpful for doing dry brushing. And that's because uh, if the surface is tacky, then the paint can delaminate or grip the paint on your brush. And it can make kind of a tacky, gooey situation. So if you thoroughly dry it, then it will avoid that. We like that. You do. You, do, like, a, you do like to make sure that you're not going to, uh, you know, do anything. Illegal? Just a painting. There's really no illegal part of this. <laughs> mm. No, so I, I'm going to take the bottom here. You went all Bonnie and Clive on me. On the Bye. art. Oh, oh, you're on top of the balloon. Shh. Yeah, I'm going to start pulling the bright values of the balloon into this. All right, that's nice. Isn't that nice? And isn't that nice? I like to say that every time. Isn't that nice? Mm-hmm. I'm just sort of trimming out the shadows and minimizing those as I go. You know, if I've got to come here and come in uh, and, and thin them even more, I can. Let's come across here and we've got a nice little, the center one is quite, the one facing us is quite bright. And so I'm just going to keep, you know, looking and paying attention to 
what the balloons got going on. Painting that down. You can see it just, it starts to happen, doesn't it? A little more there. And then maybe a little more there. Just keep layering it up. There we go. Starting to build up a thoughtfulness here. Look at that and that. Yep, it's getting there. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little of my Quinn Magenta and my Cad Red and a smidge of my Cad Yellow. All these little kind of cool highlights. Can you guys see those? Mm hmm All right. So sometimes when you lighten red with white, all you get, especially when it's CAD, all you get is kind of like a coral pink. Fantastic if oh. you're trying for a coral pink, but not fantastic if you're trying to keep your subject super red. So when that's the case, what you can do I'm going to move over that shadow. Is you can use yellow to create a lightened red, right? It's going to make it feel like a highlight, but not to take the image out of its red composition that you're wanting to do. Now I'm going to take my red here and I'm going to move this, high, this shadow just a bit. You say, I did that just a bit, just move that shadow just a bit on the balloon. I'll add that little highlight right there. A bit here. Here. So we're just getting these little highlights that are talking to us about what the shape of the balloon <laughs> like it's like it's so great with art because you're like it's not working it's not working and then all of a sudden you're like it's working it's working it's working it's working it's working <laughs> and art's like that you know a lot of times you'll even think that you hate a painting and then walk away and come back later and be like oh wait that's actually okay I'm not that upset about that all right check that out I was trying to follow you over there. You're All pretty right. quick I'm gonna with that. get a little picture of that because that's a really good stage. Now we got a nice fluffy balloon just flying through the sky. Same principle, any air balloon, any shape. Yep, turned out pretty good. Same. I mean, we're not done. Mm. We still have some finishing Irene, work to do. Irene's like, I wonder if the Sherpa will ever make it up to Toronto. I would very much love to. Um, I've talked to uh, an art store in Canada, uh, King's Art and Frame, about mm -hmm. coming up and doing an appearance. Um, and really, it's just about, um, so if you've got a place that wants to arrange for an appearance, they can contact us and we can do that. But, like, I got to get up there and stay in a hotel, you know. It's it's a thing for us. It's to, a thing. To, <laughs> like, for, like, we're going to try to do more of that kind of travel and stuff. But you know what's also in Toronto? I'm taking a little black here. Isn't there a space up there? Yep, there we, is a YouTube space. Maybe we could do a space thing. I imagine that we can. Space totally thing. Space thing. Sure, absolutely. I'm making kind of a dark red here. Because on the inside of this, I don't know why, there's a dark. It's a shadow of the inside of the. Whatever that is. It's the little shroudy thing that keeps the fire in the sky. Is that what it is? Mm hmm. Okay. Who knew? John knew. 
but we're putting it in. <laughs> we're putting it in. So that's the important thing, right? Now I'm going to take a little of my yellow, cad yellow, and a little of my yellow ochre. And I don't even mind if a little red gets picked up. And right here, I'm going to highlight that basket just a bit. Hmm. And then I'll come in and get even some white into my thing. And I'll even pop it some more. There it is. Ah. Nice little highlight right there, isn't that? That's it. Just a pop of highlight that you need. I have pulled out a Posca pen. A Posca? What's that Posca pen? So Posca are the paint pen that I recommend. These are Undi Poscas. You get them on Amazon. They come in all kinds of nibs. I have so many sets around here. My mom had found them and recommended them. And I and I, at that time, I was liking Molotols and some other stuff. Tried them. Did a uh, uh, made it go round with them where it's like 10 people coming through every 10 minutes where we did rocks with pens and it, we went through like 150 people and the pens all still worked after. Mm. So they are now the pen I like. They're a paint pen. They're a paint pen. Saying. Uni Pasca paint pens. So if I say had to do some fine lines, I could do that. Oh. See that? I saw it. Yeah. Show you a couple cool things that they'll do. She got to dry it so that when she puts the um, T-square or whatever back up there that it doesn't smear the little Posca pen. If I needed a few little wires kind of coming in there. You could make that. some wires. Yeah, get that like little effect happening. I could work down, not up. I know, I'm just like. You can come on this edge here. Come on that edge there. And like there's a couple spots here where there's like almost a white sort of a uh, stitching that shows. And now I can come in and you could do this with a really fine liner brush. Noticing that I don't continue the line the whole way through. Just on the sunlight glinty side? Yeah, like like the, the string is catching light and uh, doing a thing. I can also come along this side of the balloon very carefully. And if you're not aware of this, you can also do a thing where on some clouds you can come in, especially on low ones like this, create some cloud layer that is highlighted that is quite like woo. what what's really neat is that's actually a, an atmospheric effect that really does happen yes when a cloud is backlit and so it appears dark on the surface and can blend into the sky but because the sun is behind it, it literally silver edges those clouds so that they super stand out it's a super neat atmospheric effect see how gorgeous that is so, so not something you have to do but i do do on occasion and Thought you might enjoy seeing how that is done. I don't know that that atmospheric effect ever combines with that crazy fire in the sky clouds, but. No, it does. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, I could do it up here and stuff. You can also kind of hit some of this down here if there's some spaces that you want to talk about it going, oh, it kind of went down here and then maybe it. Sometimes, you know, these are the weird little touches that help you see the work you did. I'm always amazed by a nature and all this stuff. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, if you like the Unipascas, I did a golfing one also, kind of uh, featuring them just in general as a tool. And come along the mountain, and, and I can even come up here and make some detail work. Look. Mm. But so cool. So when we're doing art, lots we can do. Lots we can do. I think I see some here still. But a 
cool balloon, right? That's turned out, man. Yeah, people just don't know. We they know. We were know. here. Now, uh, our balloon seems a little unmanned. It, it's a rogue balloon. So I'm going to get a little uh, black and brown, and I'm going to come here. It's I'm not gonna... rogue, it's Ronan. And I'm going to make a little carrot person, as Bob Burns would say, which is just a bit of a shape. These are just the kind of silhouettes that you might see of people standing in a balloon. But you don't want to get, because this is so small, you don't want to get too detailed, do you? So now we have people in a balloon. They're there. And guess what I can also do with this? If you must sign with the pen, this would be the one I'd recommend. Oh, yeah. This turned out really nice. Look at that, guys. Wow. I feel like we need to bubble out. We, we do. We have like, so much support to do this. You know, this was one I know a lot of people, uh, because you've air balloon festivals in your area, or you've had some experience around an air balloon festival, that this was an important image. And, uh, you know, it's really hard when you work from a photo because there's this emotional attachment to what you see in the photo to translate that into a painting. And what I love showing you is, is that sometimes the painting is even more wonderful than the photo itself ever could have been because it has all that depth of color and whimsy and fantasy and those really great oh, little lines. The necklace matches your painting. Well, it's it's our Valentine's Day a necklace, doesn't that? <laughs> You're all blingy. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at Anizo really soon. Bye-bye.